Hello there. Chris Lassen here. I've uh, created uh, a um, webinar recording. Actually, this is not the real webinar recording from uh, the Shark Week, but uh, there has been some issues uh, uploading that. So I thought I'd just uh, create a new recording here and uh, to get the content uh, out to you that so many of you have uh, requested via a direct link from uh, our YouTube channel. So um, here we go. Um, many of you are familiar with us, of course, but for those who aren't and who are have registered for our webinar for the first time, um, this will be a quick uh, introduction. Um, me to the left here, Chris Lassen is my name and uh, Harry, also known as uh, Fat Tails, our market lizard, so to speak, on, on the right here. Um, chances are that many of you already have one of Harry's indicators installed on your computer. He um, has some of the most uh, downloaded uh, indicators for Ninja Trader 8. And uh, for myself, as for myself, I, um, previously ran a company that focused on sentiment analysis, uh, applying concepts from behavioral finance and uh, looking at uh, how emotions and psychology influence uh, investment decisions. And then uh, about five years ago, I uh, co-founded uh, Lizard Indicators here with, uh, with Harry. And uh, about uh, once a month, I uh, have this indicator spotlight newsletter that you can subscribe to free of charge, uh, where we uh, discuss um, one of our library indicators here with information on a general concept from technical analysis, how to use that in a trading scenario along with a free download to the indicator itself. And then of course our indicator library, uh, you'll see uh, many of these uh, indicators discussed in uh, the weekly Shark Indicators, uh, Bloodhound and Blackbird uh, workshops, open source indicators, and uh, yeah, just a place where you can find and explore a wide range of techniques for technical analysis. So there are momentum, price action, volatility, volume, trailing stop indicators, you name it, about uh, 135 indicators available there now. And uh, even if you're a pretty experienced trader, chances are you'll find some useful tools there. And finally, our premium suite, uh, they include uh, our premium or professional session tools. So the multi-time frame opening range, uh, the multi-time frame pivot and VWAP indicators, as well as our flagship tools for entry timing the auction bars and the zero lag oscillator, as well as the uh, Ichimoku indicator. And uh, now also the Lizard Renko package is available in the premium suite. And uh, many of you uh, uh, leading up to this webinar asked, uh, oh, do you really need another Renko bar? Uh, there are so many out there already. And uh, is that really necessary to come out with another Renko bar at this point? And uh, the answer to that is uh, definitely a yes, because uh, many of them have significant issues when applying them to automated systems. So um, to start off here, we'll just do a quick introduction to how Renko bars work and why they're so popular. And then we'll address some of the challenges with Renko bars. I think we can all agree that uh, having the ability to perform accurate and robust back tests is key for any form of system development. And uh, this is where many Renko bars will fall short. Typically, you will have uh, issues uh, applying Renko bars to indicators um, because um, the open, high, low, and close may not display correctly. 
Um, basically, the rank or price levels reflect a preset grid defined by this bar type, and that uh, creates uh, problems with uh, uh, specifically indicators that plot based on, on, on price action. Um, and that uh, brings us back to the uh, title of uh, this presentation, uh, where visual appeal meets robust design. And so um, our Renko bars basically have all the visual properties that have made them so popular, um, but they're based on true price action and are fully back -test testable in all modes and settings. So uh, we'll get started here now and uh, have a look at uh, how Renko trading works and uh, why it's popular and uh, how we propose to solve the challenges that uh, we currently see in this, uh, this area. Um, like many other bar types, the Renkos originate from Japan. Uh, they allow for displaying price action without taking into account time or participation of traders. And so standard Ranko bars have a uh, one to two ratio, uh, plotting a new bar in the direction of the trend when prices have made a move equivalent to the brick size. So for a uh, uh, reversal bar, uh, the price uh, would have to move twice the brick size then. And what we see here is uh, the uh, YM with the brick size of uh, five. So you need five ticks for a new trending bar and uh, obviously then 10 ticks for reversal. So we see here, uh, this is a reversal bar here and then trending five ticks, five ticks, five ticks, five ticks, five ticks, five ticks. Five ticks. And then this one is 10 ticks here. And um, a typical Renko chart uh, will therefore expand on trends, whereas uh, congestion areas are eliminated. But as I mentioned, uh, there are many challenges with Renko bars. Uh, Renko bars that allow for plotting true price action exist. Uh, others do not, and for, for us, it was uh, just important to address this issue because many of the tools um, available in our indicator library do not uh, display correctly if uh, used with uh, uh, some of the Renko products available on the market today. So um, one of the most significant issues is the uh, open uh, on the Renko bar um, it's chosen for purely aesthetical reasons and do not reflect real price action. And um, with NinjaTrader, that's an issue because uh, these fake open pricers uh, are used as entry uh, prices for all market orders. So that will uh, get you very incorrect backtest results. And then we have uh, Renko bars that get uh, most of the price action data uh, right, but uh, that do not allow for dynamic uh, trend uh, and reversal ratios. And then finally, there are issues with the zero volume fake bars and synchronization of uh, multi-bar series scripts. So if you're feeling overwhelmed by, uh, by this information and this list here, there's really no need to sit back and relax, we'll uh, go over each and every point here, step by step. All right, so Renko bars are basically comparable to a uh, sig-sag indicator with a minimum deviation of uh, twice the brick size. So minor price moves inside the bricks, uh, the plot on the charts are eliminated. And what we see here are these uh, <laughs> floating, uh, high and, and lows, um, just illustrating what uh, will happen if you use Renko bars that do not catch the real price action. And we'll have a look at that coming up here uh, and how it significant, significantly impacts uh, how indicators uh, plot. 
but as I said, uh, the more important point is uh, the open for reversal bars. Um, the open here is modified in order to allow for this uh, single brick size. And so it's, it's not a real open, uh, but just chosen for aesthetical reason, uh, not reflecting any real price action. And um, so later on, uh, we'll uh, have a look at uh, how these fake opens are used uh, for entry prices uh, with these market orders, uh, making them unsuitable for backtesting of uh, automated systems. Um, so we've uh, addressed uh, both of those uh, uh, problems, um, exposing true price action and using the real open for order execution. So you see the open is added here now. So you don't get an open price here, you get the open price down here. And uh, same for this previous reversal, open prices marked up here. It's not this level down here. Okay, so uh, the uh, visual appeal of Renko chart is um, quite striking. And uh, it's also the reason why they're the tool of choice for displaying trends. Uh, the lizard Renko comes with uh, three chart styles. And uh, the lizard brick is what we've looked at so far and what we're looking at here. And we have the option of uh, displaying bricks only as we did before with the zigzag, and bricks and wicks, as we see here. And uh, the add open mode, which I pointed out. And uh, we also have uh, the unibrick uh, style, uh, which is of course inspired by the Unirenko uh, bar type. Um, but what we do here is uh, displaying uh, the modes so that you get the correct uh, price uh, levels here. So we have the, the, the VIX and the opens uh, added to this chart here. Uh, finally, we also have uh, the candle stick mode, which uh, shows actually what's going on <laughs> in the price action here. Uh, the uh, chart style that most of us uh, are used to and that we're familiar with uh, using. And so you can use Renko charts also with the uh, candlestick uh, uh, chart style. And uh, as I said, the standard Renko bars use a ratio of uh, one to two for the uh, size of uh, trending and reversal bars. Uh, the Ninitrader uh, Renko and the better Renko uh, will allow you to adjust the brick size, but the ratio will uh, always be the same. So it will always be one to two. And uh, with uh, our uh, Lizard Renko, you can adjust the ratio dy dynamically. And so we have uh, two parameters instead of only the brick size. Uh, we have the minimum uh, price change needed for plotting a new trend bar. So what we see here is uh, five uh, ticks setting and a reversal of uh, of 10 uh, ticks needed for the uh, reversal bar. And uh, by moving this uh, requirement out to uh, 15, uh, the reversal, you see that we get a uh, one, to, one to three ratio. So five against 15 is one to three. Um, and we get these minor consolidation areas uh, removed that we saw earlier here. Uh, and then if you move it even further out um, to 20 uh, requirement for a tick reversal, uh, these trending periods become even more pronounced. So that would be it for a one to four ratio. Um, if we look at uh, the uh, Ninja Trader, uh, or the, the better Renko, I guess is what I have up here. Um, so uh, the uh, changing the brick size here to eight, uh, we definitely see a change here in the chart display, uh, but uh, the uh, ratio here is still uh, one to two. So uh, more or less the same output uh, overall. 
the challenge for many rankers is uh, merging the uh, visual appeal of uh, this bar type that we've uh, had a look at now with the uh, true price uh, levels and the true price action. Um, as we uh, compare the default uh, Renko bars that come with the Ninja Trader here to the uh, Lizard Renko, we see that these swings high and lows are several ticks off. So we see here a 55 level, here's a 61 level, here's a 20 level, here's a 26 level, here it's 50, here we have 54, and so on and so forth. And that, of course, is an issue for uh, our library indicators. Uh, the uh, default Nina Trader indicators and many other third-party indicators as well, because uh, they will not plot uh, correctly. Uh, if we look at the uh, opening range here, um, you will see that uh, uh, you will not get the correct session levels here. You will not get the correct uh, opening range uh, or the pre-session uh, level. And so we see here the Nina Trader Renko returns uh, uh, a uh, opening range uh, high plot at uh, 26,874. And the uh, pre session low here was uh, 26,849. Um, whereas if we look at this in the uh, Lizard Renko chart, we see the correct levels uh, with a first break above here the uh, pre-session low a test exactly at this uh, this level um, and then uh, breaking through the opening range high a retest exactly to the tick of that level uh, whereas this is just kind of floating in thin air here and uh, uh, you will see the same problem for all the other session tools uh, you will have the same problem with pivots with uh, Fibonacci levels, with uh, range projections, the high and the lows here are simply off, and uh, you will not have the correct support and resistance levels. Um, as you see here, uh, we do not display the VIX, uh, but the highs and the lows are still plotting correctly. You can add the VIX and the opens to verify that. And uh, we see here uh, this retest of the opening range high exactly at the 26.877 level. So um, the uh, information uh, contained within the bars uh, with the Lizard Renko is not influenced by the display options. We've separated display from price action. Uh, here, there is no uh, separation between display uh, and uh, the price levels. So uh, that will be a problem for uh, handling indicators with the Nina Trader Renko. Um, so that is it pretty much for the uh, display modes. Uh, now we'll uh, move on to the topic of uh, backtesting Renko bars. Uh, what we've done here is to create a uh, very simple crossover strategy using uh, trigger lines. Uh, that's an indicator from uh, our library. So the uh, entry and exit signals are found by using a 2080 moving average cross. So uh, there's a simple fixed profit target of uh, 100 versus a stop loss of minus 50 ticks. And uh, we've uh, compared the backtest uh, results using different types of uh, Renko bars. So we have the uh, Shark Indicators backtest Renko, uh, the Better Renko, uh, the Ninja Trader version, as well as the Uni Renko. Of course, as uh, most of you know, these uh, moving average uh, systems do not work in a live trading environment. Uh, at best, uh, they will. Uh, make your broker very happy paying uh, uh, all the commission fees. Uh, but uh, I think this illustrates some of the issues uh, that we've uh, set out to address with the release of the uh, new Lizard Renko. So uh, what we see here is uh, the backtest performance uh, for the uh, Nina Trader 8 Renko and the Uni Renko is uh, significantly different than the other Renko types. So we have uh, huge profits here, 
uh, decent uh, profit factors, uh, whereas the other ones are just showing us, okay, so this is uh, barely enough uh, to cover slippage and uh, commission costs. Um, and so uh, it's of course not showing us here that the uh, Nina Trader rate and the Unirenko are uh, better choices for your, your trading. Um, as I said, uh, the two categories of Renko bars are those that make a distinction between the information contained in the bars um, and the visual display. Uh, there are some that do and others uh, that do not. And uh, what we see here is that the lizard Renko, the shark indicator, backtest Renko, and the better Renko, um, they have more or less uh, the same backtest result, and that is uh, uh, because they use uh, real price action data. Um, as for the Nina Trader 8 Renko and the Unirenko, um, they do not make this distinction uh, between visual display and true price action. And so you should not be using them for backtesting purposes. Uh, the main cause of distortion here is actually uh, the open and the uh, market order orders, which is uh, uh, due to uh, Nina Trader's event-driven architecture, so using the bar open to establish ent entry prices. And uh, in the following year, we'll have a, a look at this and uh, how that actually uh, uh, comes to be with a few uh, practical, practical examples. Uh, again, uh, we're looking at market orders here. Uh, so the bar open as you see here, is used to establish the enterprise uh, with the Nina Trader 8 Renko. Um, but uh, these reversal uh, bars are modified to allow for the single brick size. And so they're fake. Um, and as I said, just a aesthetical a gimmick, not reflecting uh, true price action. Uh, the real open is, of course, down here. We see the close down here. And so it's very easy to imagine uh, that the open will also be at this level. However, due to this event-driven architecture, it's magically uh, moved up uh, quite a, quite a few, <laughs> few ticks here. Uh, so if you have uh, backtest signals coming on uh, these uh, reversal bars, it will be several ticks off. And uh, you will, of course, get much better execution uh, than you would in a live trading scenario. So here we have backtest execution of uh, 26,937, uh, uh, whereas the uh, listed Renko uh, would give us uh, uh, yeah, eight ticks away at 26,929. So uh, that is where the real uh, price action took place. So adding that up uh, to uh, hundreds or uh, thousands of trades, of course, you will see uh, some significant uh, distortion in your uh, backtest performance. Um, that comes on top uh, of a few other issues that we've uh, noticed with the NIN Trader 8 Renko bars. Um, we already looked at the uh, fake uh, or the false, the in incorrect uh, high and lows. And uh, then there are, are bars with the zero volume uh, that uh, magically show up in low liquidity scenarios. Uh, there are expired timestamps, uh, which means that uh, they cannot be synchronized with other bar series. Uh, so it's not really suitable for multi bar series scripts or backtesting in, in general, for that matter. Unirenko uh, has the same issue uh, because uh, market orders uh, use the fake open to establish uh, prices. Um, but the Unirenko uh, comes with a third parameter, uh, the so-called open offset, which is used to locate uh, the most uh, visually appealing fake open. Um, and unfortunately, many will test using uh, this open offset uh, equal to uh, the uh, trend tick requirement. 
uh, which is what we see here. So even on a uh, trending bar here, you get a uh, five tick uh, uh, incorrect uh, offset. And so if you, you're using uh, Unirenko for backtesting, the open offset should uh, always be kept at a minimum in order to come as close as possible to the real price action. Um, also because of a uh, bug with the Unirenko, the highs and the lows uh, are sometimes incorrect. And that of course will impact indicator output. Um, there is also a problem with the session volume. Um, the first tick of each bar is uh, actually counted twice. And so cumulative, uh, <laughs> that will uh, create an issue with the, the session volume. And uh, as uh, with the NinoTrader Renko, the timestamps are delayed and cannot be synchronized with uh, other bar series. So that makes them unsuitable as well for multi-bar series scripts and backtesting in general. Um, with the uh, Lizard Renko, we've uh, also addressed uh, synchronization issues uh, with the multi-bar series scripts. Uh, so strategies that are using multi-time frame indicators or multi-instrument analysis, that's what we, we mean by uh, these uh, multi-bar series scripts. Um, a lot of this has to do with uh, these uh, zero volume fake bars and uh, incorrect uh, timestamps. So what we've done here is to uh, create a Renko tool indicator that uh, visualizes uh, these issues. Um, and one of the features is uh, detecting low liquidity scenarios um, that will cause other Renko bar types to create these fake bars. Um, again, the problem with that is that uh, uh, the indicators will just not give you the correct output. Even a uh, simple moving average uh, using only close values will return incorrect plots because all of a sudden there are many more bars than there should be on your chart because of these uh, fake bars with uh, with zero zero volume and um, uh, we display this here with the uh, paint bars uh, basically this situation is a uh, 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 low liquidity scenario um, when there is a, uh, a gap of uh, more than one tick between the uh, closing of a uh, Renko bar and the uh, opening price of the next Renko bar uh, or uh, when the Renko bar closes above the projected high or below the projected low. So it's skipping one of those, uh, those levels uh, that are normally required uh, for the brick size. Um, for highly uh, liquid markets uh, like the YM, which is what we see here, uh, you can use uh, the default setting of uh, one uh, skipped level, which uh, will alert you to situations where uh, prices jumped two ticks in a single move. Uh, so that will sometimes happen during a news release, which is what we see here. Um, or, or during an open um, or during um, overnight trading, you will also see, see these. And so we have uh, displayed these uh, skip down ticks uh, with this yellowish bar here and a bluish for skipped up ticks. And uh, what you can do is uh, just to compare uh, this uh, uh, Renko tool display with the, some of the other Renko bars that you may be working with. And then uh, I think you will see and understand uh, how this uh, can be a problem if uh, if you're using uh, Renko tools that uh, that have fake bars with the zero, zero volume. Um, there's also a sound alert in here. So you will get uh, alerted to that on, or you can uh, uh, Access, access it uh, uh, via a public series, bull series, uh, via an indicator itself or a, a strategy. And then we also have a um, uh, projection level, um, projection levels um, 
that can be used to reduce uh, slippage. Um, it uh, basically calculates the projected high and the projected low for the next Renko bar. And so uh, that is, of course, uh, already known. As this bar closes, you will have uh, this was the projected level here is, is from this bar. And so um, you, you will know that as, as this bar closes, and then you can uh, put a stop stop order in on, on some of these levels, and then uh, you will be ahead of the line, so to speak, uh, uh, on the exchange um, and avoid uh, slippage costs uh, by getting in uh, much earlier than you would uh, by using a market order. Um, there are sound alerts uh, for this for these levels when they're triggered, um, and uh, uh, there are also two public properties: uh, the projected high and the projected low that you can access uh, again via indicator or a strategy. All right, summing up here uh, with this uh, test that we've uh, done, uh, table showing the various features and technical properties of the bars that we've tested. Uh, towards the top, it's mostly features here. So uh, this is the dynamic uh, uh, reversal size that we talked a little bit about and in the trader. And the better rec go uh, does not have that. Um, uh, the chart styles. Uh, that you have the opportunity to change uh, the display and uh, also this feature with uh, reduced uh, slippage for the uh, rank of projection levels uh, we've put in here. Um, more importantly, I think for system trading, of course, uh, whether the actual price action is captured accurately uh, as it relates to the open, high, low, and close. Uh, the issue with fake bars containing zero volume uh, that also impacts indicator output. And as we saw, uh, the uh, fake open prices, uh, which uh, impact the uh, backtest results the most. Um, so as I said, the lizard Renko, the uh, shark indicators backtest Renko, and the better Renko produce more or less the same uh, backtest results. They all make this distinction between uh, price action and display, and uh, also the timestamps uh, synchronized correctly so that they can be used uh, with multi-bar series scripts, and they are back-testable. Uh, however, uh, for the better Renko, um, there is a, a severe bug here at the end of the session. Um, it. Uh, it does something really weird with the data. So uh, the last uh, 15 to 45 minutes uh, is often missing. Um, so that is a knockout criteria because uh, the session uh, volume uh, is uh, simply incorrect. And that will, of course, um, be an issue if you're using the session close uh, for indicator. Um, uh, display um, pivots, for example, uh, very important to have a accurate session close, and uh, you will not have that if uh, uh, the session, the end of the session data is uh, is missing. Um, yeah, the Uni Renko, uh, it also uh, has a uh, knockout criteria here uh, because um, the uh, Session volume is uh, incorrect. It's uh, double counting the, the ticks. And uh, these uh, highs and lows, uh, they are also not um, uh, consistently uh, displaying correctly. So um, you want to have something which is uh, uh, dependable. And uh, the Unirenko, uh, sometimes there is uh, uh, a, a bug somewhere, I think, in that indicator that uh, makes uh, those high and low levels to be uh, off sometimes. And that's, uh, that's not good. Uh, so to uh, sum up here, 
Uh, the only suitable uh, Renko versions for system trading is uh, that we've tested is the uh, Shark uh, indicators backtest uh, Renko and uh, the Lizard Renko. Um, of course, if you want to have uh, absolute correct indicator output uh, for your entry and exits and to avoid these uh, fake bars with zero volume, uh, the Lizard Renko will be the uh, tool of choice for you. Um, and um, so with that, uh, I think uh, that was it for the uh, for the slides with the uh, the meat of the presentation. And so I'll now um, transition into the uh, event bundle that we prepared for Shark Week. We're offering a package here with uh, our Renko bars uh, and the tools. Uh, and the indicator library for 245 bucks. List value for this is uh, 345. So uh, uh, there's a very good discount on this uh, here uh, for Shark Week. Again, as I said, the library uh, is uh, the place to go to uh, explore a wide range of techniques and uh, tools for technical analysis and uh, they will come in very handy for uh, many of these uh, shark uh, indicator uh, workshops. So a uh, pretty handy tool for following along uh, for those. If uh, you already have uh, uh, the indicator uh, membership, the indicator library membership, uh, you can log into the membership section and pick up uh, the Lizard Renko package for 125 bucks now during uh, Shark Week. And we also have a uh, special Shark Week sale in the premium uh, membership uh, section. Um, members uh, already get a 10 to 20% discount on the indicators there. And uh, we've further lowered the prices now for Shark Week. Um, as some of you probably already know, our premium opening range indicator just got an update with a new version uh, that can calculate the opening range in seconds as well. And so taking that into account, uh, we will move the price up on that a uh, little bit in a few days. So this will definitely be the last uh, chance to pick up uh, the opening range multi-time frame uh, version for 95 bucks. And uh, it is, of course, also uh, where you find the other premium session tools. So the professional pivot uh, VVAP levels, uh, in addition to the auction bars, the serial lag oscillator, and the uh, Ichimoku. All righty. So this is where you go to register uh, for our promotion lizardindicators.com forward slash Renko. If you've been sitting on the fence uh, regarding Renko's, Renko's or the indicator membership, really good opportunity now to uh, dive into it. Um, yeah, much of uh, what we've seen on the market and what we've tested is uh, just making this unnecessarily complicated. So our objective here uh, was uh, to create uh, just a simple dynamic Renko bar that can be optimized for system trading. As you see, um, the Lizard Renko also has all the visual properties uh, that have made them popular, um, but it's based on true price action. So you can uh, uh, trust the indicator output and the back tests. Uh, are fully stable and robust in all modes and settings. So uh, with that, I'm going to wrap up the re-recording of uh, this presentation here. Uh, we'll have uh, the event bundle and uh, a special Shark, this uh, Shark Week sale up uh, until uh, the end of the week. So uh, sometime on Sunday, we'll, we'll take it down. So uh, head on over to uh, lizardindicators.com forward slash Renko, check that out, or log into the membership section and uh, see, uh, see what you like from the premium section. All right, guys, uh, thanks for checking into this uh, recording. I hope it's been of value for you.
If you have uh, any questions, uh, just get in touch with me via the contact form over at lizardindicators.com. Otherwise, you can shoot me off a uh, direct email as well at info at lizardindicators.com. So with that, wrapping up the presentation here, thanks again for checking in. And I look forward to hearing from you sometime soon. Take care now and bye-bye.